Nine and thirteen sixteenths, okay, two. Nine and eleven sixteenths. Okay, so let's just quickly go over how we got that for anybody who didn't get to it. What is the degree of precision here? Well, the smallest unit, smallest division on this ruler is how big? One eighth of an inch. That's my degree of precision. So that means my possible error is how much? One half of that. One eighth times one half is one sixteenth of an inch. So I can think of that as being a plus or minus one sixteenth of an inch. So that means my measurement stated is nine and three quarters inches is really plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch. So we subtract the sixteenth from nine and three quarters. We get nine and eleven sixteenths inches. Two, adding the sixteenth of an inch to the nine and three quarters, it is nine and thirteen sixteenths. Good. I'm glad you guys remember that. A lot of groups don't carry that through to the next day. Um, so we also talked about precision and accuracy. And that had to do with something we called significant digits. In an ideal world, whenever we take a measurement, we would have the measuring device right there so we could look at the measuring device and figure out what its precision was, like we did here. But in the real world, we don't have that. For you guys, however, you're doing a lot of your measurement in decimal inches and decimal units rather than fractional units like we have up here. So you might be stated that something is 8.284 inches. Looking at that, what is the precision or degree of precision of that measurement? Not the ten thousandths, the thousandths. Because that is the place value of that last significant digit. We mentioned this yesterday, but we didn't go over it a lot. What is the accuracy of that? In other words, how many significant digits? One, two, three, four. That's your accuracy. Four significant digits. Remember, any digit that's not a zero must be significant. Well, now let's take a look at some zeros. This is still, of course, precise to the nearest thousandth of an inch. What is the accuracy of it? Two significant digits. These zeros are not significant because there's no significant digits in front of them. Zeros that are at the beginning of a number, if there are no significant digits in front of them, they are never significant. This has a precision of what? Well, let's do this. Let's do the accuracy first. What's the accuracy of this number? Three. The seven and the eight are obviously significant. The zero between them has to be because it's between significant digits. The zero at the end, however, is not significant unless we are told it is. So this has three significant digits. It has an accuracy of three significant digits. So its precision is to the nearest ten. Very good. Just let me let me make my point, okay? Wait, they'll probably answer your question in the next couple of minutes. Okay. So here, the two and the eight are obviously significant. What about the zeros? Yeah. Because the decimal point's there, this zero after the decimal point, even though it's not indicated, there's absolutely no reason to put it there unless it's part of the measurement. If I took it away, it wouldn't change the numerical value of this number at all. So it's not vital for the number side of it. So it, the only reason for it to be there is if it's part of the measurement side of it. So since that is significant, this one must also be significant. So this has four significant digits is its accuracy. 
And since we know that zero is significant, it has a precision of a tenth. So what does that what what is it? Do you have a precision of in a, in a problem? Or you just well, know what it's you know what yeah. I'm like. Yeah, give me a minute and we'll get we'll get back into some of that, what the precision actually means. The line can either be on top or bottom. It depends. I noticed your book is putting it on top, so that's why I'm putting it on top today. So here, the 4 and the 2 are obviously significant. This 0 is indicated as significant. So that has how many significant digits? 4, and it is precise to the nearest 10. Technically, there should be units on that. It's precise to the nearest 10 inches. So the difference between that number and this number, this one, of course, has an accuracy of how many digits? Only two, the four and the two. And a precision to the nearest thousand inches. The difference is what it's saying here. This one is saying my measuring device can only measure to the nearest thousand inches, which I know is kind of ridiculous. but And this object came somewhere in here closest to 42,000. That's this one. This one is saying, and I'm not going to put 100 divisions in between these, but This one here is saying that our device is actually capable of measuring to the nearest 10 inches, and it happened to be closest to 42,000, which implies a range like this. A lot tighter, isn't it? So the, the precision being... 10 inches here, that means the error is what? Plus or minus five. half of the precision, 5 inches. So this is implying a range of 41,995 4, inches to 42,005 inches. That's the range being implied there. This one with a precision of a thousand inches has an error of plus or minus how much? 500 inches. So this 42,000 is implying a range from 41,500 to 42,500. So if you're looking at that, your tolerance here is a thousand inches. Your tolerance here is only 10 inches. That's from minimum size to maximum size, a 10 inch range. Make sense? So there's a huge difference between those numbers. And the, the main reason why I am, we're going over this, as I said, so you can understand how, how some of them fit together, but also, come on. When you go to organize stuff, if, or you take down a measurement and you're, You measure something that's at 28.0 centimeters. Sometimes if you're looking at all your other numbers have two decimal places, it's tempting to put it down like this, isn't it? What's wrong with that? Yeah, you've, well, not your accuracy. Well, you've increased your accuracy too, but you've also increased your precision. This one has a precision of the nearest tenth of a centimeter, which means it has an error of plus or minus 0 0.05 centimeters, which is implying this goes from 27.95 centimeters to 28.05 centimeters. This one has a is implying a precision of a hundredth of a centimeter, which means there's an error of plus or minus 0 0.005 centimeters. 
So it's implying a range of 27.995 to 28.005. You see, that is much different than this. If you write it down like this, we know what you're really saying is somewhere between 27.95 and 28.05. Because your measuring device is never exactly on the line. It's somewhere in a range around the line. If you write it down like this, we're mistakenly, mistakenly thinking it fits in this range. And if we need to use that piece for something that has to be really close to that, we're being misled. Does that make sense? Does that answer the question you had about zeros? This one? Yeah, the zero has to be there. If you remove the zero, it would change the meaning of the other numbers. Yes. yes. So it has to be there for the other numbers. So the, that, that, that means it's not necessarily part of the measurement unless it's indicated. Yeah. But here, this zero doesn't have to be there, so then we know it must be part of the measurement. These zeros here, since they ha have to be there for the numbers, we have to indicate whether they're part of the measurement or not. And if they're not indicated, we assume they're not. That's another thing when you start getting into precision and quality, and, and stuff like that is you always assume the worst. If it doesn't state the precision of the measuring device, you look at the number and you assume the worst. Here, it is very possible that this was taken with a device that can measure to the nearest hundredth of an inch, and it just happened to be closest to 7,080, and they just wrote it down without putting the decimal point places after it. But we don't know that. Now, it might be written down like that, it might be stated. A, a good quality control person will make a note Somewhere saying, you know, measuring device capable to 0 0.01 inches. Well, if we're given that side note, then it doesn't matter how the number is written down. We are told the degree of precision of the measuring device. So all this stuff about significant digits only applies if we don't have that information about the measuring device. If we know that this was measured with a 100th of an inch caliper, well then we know that the precision is a hundredth of an inch. And we can go proceeding accordingly no matter what it's recorded as. Does that make sense? So that's important and it's not significant. Yeah. not important and it's still significant. Yeah, it's not important, but it's still significant. Which means this one's not important to the number, so it's significant. This one is important to the number, so it's not significant unless it's indicated. And that's that, we talked about that yesterday, about you got to get that your your preconceived issue of significance. We think significant means important, but in measurement it's not. It's important to the number, that means it's only significant if we indicated it. It might not be part of the measurement. Okay, well what else are we gonna use these significant digits for? Well, when we go to do operations with measurements, we're gonna talk, talk about adding and subtracting first. When we add or subtract, we preserve precision. By saying we preserve precision, I'm saying we preserve the least precise precision, degree of precision. If I have 3.2 inches plus 2.43 inches, I line up my decimal point. I add, put in my zero to fill that spot. Notice I put that zero in in a different color so I don't confuse it. Zero and three make three, two and four make six. Bring down my decimal point, three and two make five. I'm not going to leave this as 5.63. I'm going to round to the proper significant digits. Proper significant digits, since I'm adding, is to preserve precision. What's the precision of this top number without that zero that I put on it? It's precise to the nearest tenth of an inch, right? This one is precise to the nearest what? 
hundredth of an inch. That is implying that this is plus or minus 0 0.05 inches, and this is plus or minus 0 0.005 inches. Which one of these is least precise? That one's the lesser precise. I mean, a hundredth is more precise than a tenth, right? What that means is I have to round my answer to the nearest tenth. 5.63 becomes 5.6 inches. Now the question always comes up, how on earth is that better than saying 5.63? Isn't 5.63 more precise, more exact? Well, yes and no. It's, it's, it is more exact, but it's dishonest. Because the 3.23 here is plus or minus 0.05 inches. How much did we round off here? 0.03, right? We went from 5.63 to 5.6. We rounded off three hundredths of an inch. Our error in this measurement is more than what we rounded off. We cannot leave that three on there because we don't know if it's true. The error of this first measurement could overshadow that three hundredths. So we have to round off to the nearest tenth. Now, some people will say that before you add them, you have to have the same precision. So some people will say round them before you add. If it's only two numbers, that works just fine. If you're having three, four, or more numbers, you, if you round it before you add, it can throw off your answer because of round off errors. So I always say round after you add or subtract. So it's always the first number that you're adding? Not always. The, two, that your first one is going to be your precision that you go to, so 3.2? You might have... this. We're going to add these two. Okay, whatever got less significant. There it is, less degree of precision. Well, I'm going to have to fill in my zero here so I can add. But 2, 13, 14 decimal point. 18, 58.432 inches. But yeah, this is precise to the nearest thousandth. This is precise only to the nearest hundredth. So my answer has to be the hundredth. Whichever one has the lesser degree of precision, yes. And by lesser, I mean bigger possible error. Well, if they have equal. Then you don't have to do anything. Then you don't have to worry about it. If they have the same precision, then you're good. Well, if they have the same degree of precision, 27.4 inches plus 18.9 inches. When you add them together, thirteen carry the one decimal point sixteen four. They, if both numbers that you start with have the same degree of precision, when you add or subtract them, you're going to always end up with that degree of precision, so you don't have to worry about it. I'm just saying this one, and then you have more of that number in there. Oh, like three numbers or four numbers. Yep. Like, again, since those are starting out with the same degree of precision, you're going to end up. Thirteen, eleven, thirteen, eleven. The two numbers started with the same degree of precision. Your answer is going to be to that degree of precision. So you don't need to worry about yeah. Both of your inputs have the same degree of precision. When you add or subtract, you really don't need to worry about rounding your answer. It's only if one input has a less precise degree of precision than the other. So you can think of it as less precise. Sometimes it's easier to think of it as you round to the precision of the number that has the largest possible error. This one is going to have a larger possible error because it is less precise. So its error overpowers those other digits that are beyond that degree of precision in the other number.
Then you know, subtract that and round it to the correct number of significant digits. So put in the zero there and you subtract. Three minus zero is three. Four minus eight, we're gonna borrow. Fourteen minus eight is six, bring down the decimal. Six minus nine, we're gonna borrow. Sixteen minus nine is seven, bring down the one. What do we have to round it to? 17.6. Because this one is precise to the nearest hundredth, but this one's only to the nearest tenth. So we have to round our answer to the nearest tenth. This, the less precise, yeah. Any questions? What if the three was a six? What if the three was a six? Yeah. Okay, so if we had something like 24.86 plus 7.9. Put in our zero. So we got six. 17, 12, 3. So this is hundredths. This is tenths. So we got to round to the nearest tenth. That does round up to 8. Just an example of that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, you don't just drop the digits. You do actually round. Yep, you are correct. That's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. So when you add or subtract, you preserve precision. You worry about precision. When you multiply or divide, you preserve oh, preserve accuracy. Accuracy remembers the number of significant digits. So if I have 47.2 inches times 3.8 inches, I'm going to use the calculator to multiply them all just instead of doing it by hand. So 47.2 times 3.8. Gives me 179.36 inches. But when we multiply or divide, we preserve accuracy. How many, what's the accuracy of this number? How many significant digits? Three significant digits. How about this number? Two significant digits. Which one has the fewer? Two. So my answer is starting from the beginning. I go one, two. I've got to round it off there. squared, 180 inches squared. Now, when I first saw this, I stared at it and I thought, why? I mean, to me it looks like we're losing a lot of information there. But, and the, the explanation of why is really a long one and I'm not going to get into it, but it really does work out that the digits that are after that tens place you can, you can find examples where those digits are meaningless because of the precision, the accuracy of those measurements. That you can find examples where those digits change significantly even though these numbers don't change significantly. And I'm not going to take the time to go through that here, but it is a, it really is the best way to report it here. By reporting it this way, 
you're avoiding down the road using information that isn't real. Um, tomorrow in the first hour of class, we'll talk about tolerances and errors and how these operations work with those tolerances as well. It's really, for, for your jobs, it's not horribly important. If you get into the design side of it, it is, especially if you're analyzing strengths and stuff like that, to see if a material is going to hold up under the forces that it's under, or if the, you know, calculating what all the forces are and stresses are going to be on that object. If your forces are measured to a certain degree of precision or a certain accuracy as you go through the calculations, um, if you don't round the appropriate significant digits, you can get forces that are way lower or way higher than what you really should have. Um, as an example of this, when I was in college, I worked as a lab assistant um, for a very renowned uh, researcher. His name was Albert Irwin. And when I started with him, they had just done some research. It's called the emission spectrum of silicone isotopes, where you bombard it with high, high energy light. And then you, every material when you bombard it with light will actually absorb some of the light. Then when you shut off the light, it re-emits some of the light. Most of it does not re-emit light in the visual spectrum, so you can't see it, but sensors can pick it up. That's why glow in the dark stuff that you see, you expose it to the light, and then you shut off the lights and it glows. All that is is that it absorbs light and then it re-emits it in a visual spectrum, in a, a visual form of light rather than ultraviolet or, or uh, infrared. But they had thought they had discovered something new that had never been seen before in the, the spectrum of a silicone atom or silicone isotope. Well, I, when I came on, it was as they were analyzing the data, and it was my job to go back through their calculations, and they did not take care of their errors, their degrees of precision and stuff correctly in their calculations. And it came out that the result that they had found was smaller than the error compilation in their calculations. So they couldn't count it as a valid result. So they had to go back and redo the, the, the experiment, taking more precise measurements. And in their, they redid the experiment two or three times, and they were never able to replicate the result they had. So it turned out that it was an error in calculation that caused that apparent result. So I realize none of you guys are most likely not going on to do research in nuclear physics, but you know, there are applications outside of that that are a little less precise that still mistakes can be made. Um, this is what you call safety margins when you're talking about designing strength of materials and stuff like that or structural applications. Um, it's to make sure that your errors and your measurements are not going to cause issues later. Now, when you get into real design, you actually add an, an additional safety margin on it just to make sure you didn't have an extra error in your measurement. In uh, engineering school, it was always uh, double it and add 100 was the, the joke. Of, so you design how strong, a, how much force a beam is going to ever have to hold in a certain application. Then you double it and add 100 to it, and that's you design the beam to hold that much. It was a joke because that's not really how you did it. But... <coughs> So anyway, let's say we're going to have 4,800 square inches divided by 3.25 inches. So we divide 4,800 divided by 3.25. So 1,476.923. Square inches divided by inches is just inches. Where do I have to round this at? Well, this is precise the nearest. Or this has three digits, right? This has how many digits? Two. So I have to do only two digits. So 15,000. 1,500, sorry, you're right. 1,500 inches is what I have to round that to. What do you think? Try some, see how they go. Yeah. This is in the big book. We're going to try a few different things today. Page 226. X, 
exercise 7-7, do the odds. I think it's 1 through 16. Page 225, exercise 7-5, I realize I went backwards there. I believe that's 1 through 16 as well. Page 224, exercise 7-4, again I realize I went backwards. Do the odds in both of those. And then, page 227, exercise 7-8. Do the odds again there. So I know I got those out of order, but you guys get the picture. 